thank you so much to everyone who watched, liked, and commented on last week's Rust video. We're going to keep going with the Rust theme this video. In fact, we're going to look more closely at one of the pieces of Rust that we used last week but kind of glossed over, and that is the parse method for parsing strings into other types. So as a quick refresher, here's how you can use the parse method on a string. We've got some string here that is a number, but it's being represented as a string, and we want to parse it to a U size type. And so we can do string.parse, and in the TurboFish here, we can set the generic type to be U size. And now if we take a look at the type of num, it's not just U size, but it's a result of U size. The idea, of course, with the Rust result enum is that if we can't get a successful value, we need an error instead. And so U size here is the success, and then parse int error is the error you would get if this string can't actually be parsed to the U size type. And then when we have a result type like this, we can use match on that. We've got our OK branch, which means this was successfully parsed. If we look at the type of n, you can see it is U size, and we can print that out. If we get some error instead, we'll just print out we can't parse that value. So this is pretty straightforward. We can go ahead and do cargo run. And as you can see, we can successfully parse our number as one, two, three. If instead, maybe let's change this to some other string like one, we can get the text cannot parse one. Now, the way this parse method works is completely controlled by a particular Rust trait. So let's take a look at the Rust docs here. And we're looking at the trait from stir. Quick aside on Rust traits. Essentially, it's kind of like an interface in other languages where it describes some behavior that multiple types can implement. And so we can see from this trait here that the main thing we need to implement is this from string or from stir function. And this, of course, is going to take some string and then it's going to return a result. And a result is going to be self or whatever the type that this trait is being implemented on is. And we also need an error here, which is going to be pretty similar to the same error that we saw in our result type here, right? So in this case, it's a parse int error or a u size. And we're going to do something similar to that in just a second. Now, take a look through the docs. They actually give you an example here of implementing a point struct and how to implement from stir on that. And we're going to do something very similar to this in just a second. But one of the cool things about the Rust docs is that you can see all of the cases where this trait is implemented in the standard library. For example, we can see how bool implements from string just by clicking on source right here. You can see it's a very simple method here. We just take a look at the string. And if the string is the text true, then we convert it to true. If it's false, we return false. Otherwise, we return our parse bool error. And as you can see, this is a very simple example of implementing from stir on the bool type. So you can look at other ones here if you want, but we're going to implement our own example of this. So first we need some kind of type that has a string representation, but also has like a structural representation. And the idea that I've come up with for this is a struct that is an equation. So we're going to have simple equations that are really just addition. One plus one equals two. There's an example of a string. 10 equals one plus two plus three plus four. We could even have ones that are wrong. So for example, um, let's change this to be something like uh, six plus seven. And our equation type here should know whether these strings are true or false. So if we fill out our equation struct here, it's pretty simple. I think we want a left that is a string. We want a right that's also a string. We could represent them as numbers, but then we lose the arguments. So we'll represent them as strings. And then we also have is equal. And that, of course, will be a Boolean. So now that we have our equation, we want to implement our from string trait on here so that we can take a string like this and parse it into a structure like this. So to implement a trait in Rust, we use the impl keyword, and we want to implement the from stir trait. And I'm gonna let my editor import this for us. As you can see up here on line one, we've implemented use standard string from a string. So we've implemented that trait. Now back down here on line 10, we want to implement this specifically for equation. So while the syntax here is pretty different from other languages that use classes and interfaces that implement those classes, we kind of have a similar idea here where we have some equation structure here, which is kind of like a class that represents the shape of our object. And then we have a particular interface from string that represents methods that we want to implement on that particular equation. The weird thing about the way Rust works though is it's kind of backwards, right? We're implementing from string here almost on the string type. 
or as a way to operate on a string and convert it into an equation. It's a little bit backwards from maybe the typical object-oriented class interface model that we're used to, but it turns out to be really, really powerful, I think. Now we need to implement two things in our implementation of from string here. And if we go back to our docs, we can see what that is. We need to implement some type that is called error. We'll come back to that in a second. And then we need to implement a function called from stir that takes a string and returns a result. Remember, we're seeing this result again. The result needs to return self if we're okay. In our case, self is equation. And then it also needs a self error variant, which is this error right here. Now, when we parsed a number, we saw that this error was a parse int error. So maybe we need a parse equation error. And to create an error type, we can really just create a struct again. And we can call this parse equation error. Now we don't really need fields or values inside of this error object. And so we can just create it like this. This is called a unit struct where basically there's, there's no values inside of it. It's pretty much just like a symbol. And so in here now we can say the type error that we need to add here is that parse equation error. Now we're getting an error here on line 14 and that's because of a dumb typo from me. This should not be from, this should be for. Now this error message makes a little bit more sense. The problem is that we're missing our from string implementation. Now, if you have the Rust analyzer running in your editor, you can use code actions to implement the missing members. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. That may be like a right click or a little menu for you if you're not using Vim. And here's the method that we need to implement. Our from string method takes a string and needs to return self, which in this case, notice self is equation. Let's go ahead and start implementing this. And I think the first thing we want to do is split on the equal sign, and then we want to parse over each side of our equation. All right, so now let's start processing this string. I think we want to use a method called split once, and we're going to use this to split on the equal sign. So we have the right and the left sides of our equation. Split once, as you can see here, returns an option that wraps a tuple of two strings. And those two strings in our case are going to be the right side and the left side of the equation. So let's go ahead and split on that equal sign. We can chain on our option here and we can use a method called and then. Now remember the option type that is returned from split once has two variants. It can either be none if there was no equal sign to split on or it can be sum and that sum variant wraps our tuple of two values. So we can chain a usage of and then onto this and notice how this works. It returns none again if the option is none otherwise it calls the function that we're passing to it. So this is a great way to ignore the none value and process the sum value. In our function here, we're going to destructure our tuple and we've got our left and our right sides. Let's write some code that is going to parse both of these strings into individual numbers. And we expect both of these strings to either equal a number or to be like a string sum. So like one plus two plus three plus four. And so we're going to write a little helper function here to parse both of those out. It's going to sum up that string of numbers. It takes our string pointer here and returns a number. So what we can do in here is split it on the plus sign here and then let's map over each value in there. So each value that we map over is still a string, right? We're cutting a string into smaller strings. But then what we can do in here is do x uh, dot trim to trim any white space on either side. And then let's use parse again, right? We know we can do this. We want to parse this into a u size element. Now, as we've seen, parse returns a result. So it could be a number, could be an error. And so let's unwrap that result object and let's do unwrap or, and if it's an error inside that result, then we'll default to zero. So what we should have at the end of this is an iterator over u size elements, right? Because we're mapping over the iterator that we get out of our split. We can finish this up by doing sum. Now our function here returns u size. So we're gonna sum up all of these. So because this line here is the last expression in our sum function, the value of this is returned. Back up here, we can say let left equal sum over L and let's let right equals sum of r. Okay, so now we're ready to return from our little function here. Now the and then function we're using requires that we return an option. An option has two variants, sum and none. So we're gonna return the sum variant and we want to wrap this around an equation. All right, so our equation needs a couple of fields. We need a left, which in our case, actually we don't want to use this left because that's the value. We want to use the string version of left. So we're gonna do left.trim just to clean it up a bit. And then we're gonna do uh, two string. And two string is gonna convert the uh, kind of like the byte array slice type pointer that we've got here to an actual string object. And we're going to do the same thing for right. And then we need to implement is equal. This is a bool. So we'll just say does left 
double equal right. My editor is still complaining here. And the problem is that, let's go ahead and say, uh, just temporarily, we'll say let x equal all of that. If we look at the type of x, we can see this is an option around equation. So it could return an equation, it could return none. Not what we need though, we need a result. And so we need to convert this option to a result. And we can do that right down at the bottom here with an OK or. And if we look at OK or, you can see that OK or transforms the option T into a result T and E. So that's exactly what we need. And E is the argument that we need to pass to this function. So we're going to pass it uh, the parse equation error. And now if we go back to the top here and look at the type of X, you can see that X is a result of equation, which as we know is self, and parse equation error, which as we know is self colon colon error. So with all that being correct, let me take you off this variable assignment. So this really should be all we need to do to implement our string parsing for our own custom equation type. So let's give this a test run here. Let's write another helper function here, and we're gonna call this test equation. And in here we can do s.parse, and we'll say we expect this to be parsed into an equation. And let's go ahead and match on that. Notice we have an error, of course, but the error has nothing to do with equation, which is good. What that means is Rust recognizes that it can parse an equation into a string. If we were to come up with some other type here, maybe I'm just going to copy this and I don't know, let's call it something else, user. If we had this user struct and I change this to be user, we get a different error here, which says that the trait from string is not implemented for user. So let's go ahead and change that back to equation. In our OK branch, let's actually destructure our equation here. And then inside of this branch here, we can say if is equal, we can do left does equal right. And on the other side of this uh, does not equal. Okay, so now we have a test EQ function. Let's go ahead and call uh, test EQ. And let's go ahead and give this a run. So we can do uh, cargo run and we can see that one plus one does not equal three, correct? One plus one does equal two and one plus five does equal four plus two. As I've been learning more about Rust, traits seem to come up pretty often and seem to unlock a lot of really cool flexibility in my programming. So I'm gonna be learning more about these. I think from string is a really cool first trait to play around with, but if you have other favorite traits that you think I should take a look at, do let me know in the comments. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next week.